This is a 74C14, in my case I used an HC14, to construct a square wave oscillator. I went over this in another video. What other uses can we have for the 7414 Smith trigger inverter? Makes a pretty nice debounced switch. You can have a push button switch or you can have a slide switch that you close. Either way, it produces a high output when you push the switch or close the switch. This is a typical 74C14. It has six Schmidt trigger input inverters. They come in several types with various differences. The 74C14, the 7414, the HC14, and the LS14 all have the same pinouts. You can plug them into the same socket, and they should work. Now, I've used the 74HC14. I believe it's the best. I had some old 7414s in my collection. I tried them. They would not work for the square wave oscillator. So be aware of that. Any of them will work fine for the debounced switch. I found out that the 7414, the older ones, might not work for this. So be aware of that. With six inverters, we can build six debounce switches or six square wave oscillators. But what if we wanted to go a little further? Let's see how we can produce more sophisticated output waveforms than just a square wave and just a switch output. All right, we're going to discuss a new circuit. This is going to be very brief here known as a differentiator circuit. I have a complete separate video that explains how this works. Very simply, if I have a square wave or other pulse input, I input it on the capacitor and the output is taken across, across a load resistor R. Basically, when the square wave goes high, I get a rush of current see the blue arrow here that comes through the resistor giving me this positive going spike. When the square wave goes back to zero the capacitor begins to discharge back through the uh, gate that powered it and the current moves in the opposite direction giving me a negative going pulse. We can use this circuit to do some interesting things with a couple of gates. Why would we need to create narrow pulses? Again, I might need a clocking, a narrow clocking pulse that I can't get out of just pushing a button to run a flip-flop. And of course, you can use a debounce switch to give you D, but you need best to test these things out. You need a narrow pulse. And this circuit will give you your narrow pulses. This again is my square wave oscillator as we built it before. This 0, 01 microfarad capacitor and 10K resistor form a differentiator circuit that you saw a moment ago, producing those positive and negative spikes. Diode D1 blocks the negative spikes and the positive spikes are sent to another 7414 gate. Again, with its Schmidt trigger input, it will produce the waveform down here at C. It's normally high and when the pulse hits it, it goes low. So it goes from high to low at this point at C. But by using another Schmidt trigger inverter, I completely invert C to get B. Now, if I need it, I have a positive going narrow pulse. Guess what? I can use the same circuit too with my push button debounce switch to do the very same thing. I can produce the uh, output at A that comes right off the 7414 
or I can produce those narrow positive and negative going spikes to operate say flip-flops and, and other devices that need a narrow trigger pulse. Here is a blow-up of the trigger pulses that you see. This is what's coming out of A. This is B where you have a about a 2% duty cycle. And here is C with a um, on time of 98%. These are inverted from each other. This is what you would want in most of the, like the uh, homemade uh, D flip-flop here you, for the clock. You would want to use the pulse here at B that needs a positive going pulse. Here is the oscilloscope representation of the circuit. Here's the square wave going in. This is our positive and negative going pulses from the differentiator circuit. Here is the positive going pulse that wasn't blocked by the diode. In other words, this negative going pulse was blocked by the diode. This is the output of the first 7414 that goes from high to low based on the trigger pulse width. And 4 is inverted to give me this output at B. Alright, let's look at a couple of things here on the trigger pulses real briefly. This, uh, this I'll go over elsewhere. Here is my square wave input. If I use a 0.1 microfarad for C, C being right there, I get a output pulse ultimately from B that's 2 milliseconds. That's sort of wide. The width of this pulse depends on the value of the capacitor. If I go to a 0.01 microfarad capacitor, then I'm producing a pulse that's something like um, 100 or 200 microseconds. Very short pulse, very useful for clocking flip-flops and other devices. And that's all there is to it. Uh, thanks for listening to the video. This information is on the web page that I have a link for. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Thanks for listening. And subscribe to my channel.